What if I told you that the current Dendro Archon is just the weekend form of the previous Dendro Archon, and that both entities are essentially the same person? That makes sense though, Minzliff, and Paimon thinks that it's so obvious after the Archon I know, quest, I know, and also that- Let me explain with some context clues and some lore diving and research. I'm your leafy Lord Shimmer Minzliff, and today we're going to explore the theory that Kusanali and Duga Devata are the same person by analyzing the name Nahida, exploring dual entity theory, and speculating Ruga Tavata's transformation into Kusanali. Before we begin, here's a quick recap of Kusanali's origin story. During the event known as the Cataclysm 500 years ago, the event where the nation of Konya was destroyed while abyssal creatures were released into Teyvat, the former Dendro Archon known as Greater Lord Duke Tavata was killed according to the lore and the Viridescent Venerer's determination. From the ashes was born the new Dendro Archon, Gusanali, who was taken by Sumeru Sages to the Sanctuary of Sudastana, where she currently resides. If you remember from the 3.0 Archon quest, Gusanali used the name Nahida before revealing her true identity. The name Nahida is a derivative or in some areas a full titular equivalent of the modern name for Anahita. Anahita or Anahid is the old Persian name while Nahid is the middle and modern Persian name, with Nahida being a less common variety. Anahita is an Indo-Iranian divinity of the waters, and is often associated with fertility, healing, and wisdom. More specifically, the source water is described as a fount of all water in the world. It is the purest and most holy of waters, and for this reason it is incredibly revered. It also bears the power to bring life wherever it flows, much in the same way water is understood, even today, to be life-giving. This source water of Anahita may have been the inspiration for the Varuna Contraption. The Varuna Contraption was created by Greater Lord Duga Tavata to summon the timely rains for a portion of the desert. This device works by changing the flow of water in Apam Woods, absorbing water from the area to create the Varunastra, the giant pillar of water that maintains the constant cycle of rains to nurture the forest, which was once a desert. The Aranara tell us that the water is life-giving and is the foundation of the rainforest. Ultimately, the Varuna Contraption is not powered singularly by Ruka Tavata. It is also powered by the current Dendro Archon, Nahida aka Kusanali. The transposition of the idea of source water into Genshin lore establishes a parallel link between Anahita and the Dendro Archon. In other words, there is at minimum a textual link between Anahita and Nahida. This leads us to our next point, dual entity theory. Anahita is known as a syncretistic goddess who was composed of two independent elements. The first is her status as the goddess of source waters, and the second is her status as a goddess conflated with the cult of Ishtar, one of the leading deities in Zoroastrianism. Essentially, Anahita exists as a dual entity. Since all of our prior research has suggested that there are strong ties between Anahita and Nahita, then it's reasonable to at least investigate whether Anahita's story can map onto Nahida's particularly in the aspect of dual entities. Based on the Aranyaka Part 2 and 3 quests, the Tevarian laws of the universe establish the key relation between memories and power, especially in the context of Dendro. Sacrificing memories positively translates to more power, as seen with the genesis of the Ashvata tree in the conclusion of Aranyaka Part 2. The forest, and by extension the Dendro element, displays a particular sensitivity to this exchange. The trees and plants, including the Irminsul and ley lines, are capable of absorbing stories and experiences, and they maintain these memories as a functional archive. This concept is repeated often in the phrase of the Aranara, the forest will always remember. It's important to note that the natural world in general can also do the same. An example is the rock that Kunjun reads during Zhongli's story quest, part 2. The Aranara are the only example we've seen that are able to harness this power. In doing so, they revert to an infantile state post-exchange. They lose their sophistication of speech, their powers are curbed, and their understanding of their genesis, how they got where they are, is completely wiped. Speaking of infantile state, the circumstances of infant Kusanali's emergence into this world are incredibly suspicious. She was allegedly found by the sages of the academia in ruins, which are suggested to be the same place, or at least very close to where Ruka Tavata died. Her birthday also falls exactly on the day that Ruka Tavata died. Her ascension to Archonhood is one thing, but for her birthday in particular to be the exact same day as Ruka Tavata's passing seems too coincidental. The sages are against Nahida because acknowledging her existence as a Dendro Archon is tantamount to admitting that Ruka Tevata, their beloved Archon, is dead. 
The sage's reluctance to admit such, as well as the ways they have concealed the exact nature of Nahida's birth and appearance, should cast doubt on how certain we can be that Duke Devata is dead, in the traditional sense at least. Nahida herself has fuzzy memories of how she came into being as both Archon and individual identity. Her existence simply began, as far as she knows. The Airman Soul maintains the last memory's words of Duke Devata. Keep this in mind for now. In A's voice line section, she says to the Traveler, I'm fearful because of what I witnessed 500 years ago. Her demise and that thing. Whether that thing was a manifestation of celestial wrath, or an abyssal or conrian force is unclear, but the takeaway is that it posed a serious danger. If that thing was against the Archons, then it is possible that Luka Devata could have sacrificed her memories in a short-term barter for power. Evidence for this lies within the Ermansol. Remember the Ermansol maintaining Luka Devata's last words? The fact that her memory is stored within it suggests that Luka Devata made some sort of exchange at or within the Ermansol. What exchanges involve memories? Oh, Paimon knows! Exchanges of power! Exactly. Exchanges of power. Duke Devata may have exchanged memories for power in a last-ditch attempt against that thing that A mentioned during the Cataclysm. This encounter could have resulted in an extreme depletion of Duke Devata's power, reverting her to an infantile state and mass destruction causing scorched ruins, the basis of which is Kusanali's origin story. If you're still not convinced, Kusanali is derived from Kusanali Jataka. In the Kusanali Jataka, Buddha recounts some of his previous incarnations and his life. The concept of Buddhism and reincarnation has already been referenced in the 3.0 Archon Quest Part 2 with the Samsara, the cyclicality of life much like the repeating events we witnessed during the Sabsedus festival. Buddhism would indicate that while the body changes and the manifestation in each Samsara may change, the soul is fundamentally the same. And so the person, as an entity beyond mortal comprehension, stays the same. Kusanali, if we take it to be true that she is the weekend form of Duke Devata, has lived essentially a different samsara than Duke Devata, but she is arguably still the same person. Much like Goba is the weekend form of Mercotius, and Paimon is the weekend form of. Paimon thinks that no one's supposed to know that just yet. This theory was brought to you by the Conrio program, featuring the Super Mondstadt Bros, Kaya Expert, and Diluc Expert, and yours truly, the Dainsliff Expert. I'm your leafy Loishimer Minsliff, and if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.